live chopper eight. Nothing gets you closer. This is the plaintiff, Chloe Sweeney, manager of It's a Mod Mod World, a funky East Village store. She claims the store lent the defendant a drag queen, a custom-made lamp, couch pillows, and a dress form to use on the set of her cable access talk show. The stuff was damaged and or never returned, so she's suing for $300, the value of the items. This is the defendant, Hedda Lettuce, star of the Hedda Lettuce Show and her sidekick, Bubbles. She says her good friend, the plaintiff, agreed to give her the lamp and all in exchange for free advertising on the show. She stated on the air that the set was partially provided by It's a Mod Mod World and isn't about to pay for something that belongs to her and is worth no more than $100 tops. She's accused of taking advantage of a friend. What you are witnessing is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in a New York metropolitan area court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their dispute settled here in our forum. The People's Court. Hello again, everybody. I'm Carol Martin. Welcome to another session of the People's Court. To join in on our interactive website, log on with us today at peoplescourt.com. And from the People's Corner right outside the studio, let's go down and say hello to my co-host, attorney Harvey Levin, on a gorgeous day, Harvey. So gorgeous here in New York, Carol. We are at 33rd and Broadway, the People's Corner, and we have tons of faux barristers here who cannot wait to comment on the opinions of the, uh, the litigants and on Judge Koch's decision, so take it away. Oh, barristers. Okay, Harv. Well, here's our first case on today's docket, an interesting one, the case of what a drag. According to the plaintiff here, the only deal the owner had with the talk show host was to let her use his store's unique merchandise to dress the set and return it in the same condition when she was finished with it. Now, according to the defendant, once she satisfied her end of the barter agreement and on air credit, the merchandise belonged to her, no ifs, ands, or butts. Now, she did that, and she has a tape of her show to prove it. So just what kind of deal did the lit litigants have? Let's take a listen so, now. Uh, the plaintiff is uh, Chloe Sweeney, and uh, the defendant, Hedda Lettuce. And you are suing, according to the uh, complaint, uh, for the value of property, set decorations, uh, that you allegedly provided to the uh, television show, and What's important is that you tell me the terms under which uh, you uh, provided that material. So, do start okay. at the beginning. Um, Hedda approached the owners of Mod World in September 1996, and she asked if she could borrow some uh, stage sets for her show, the Hedda Lettuce Show on cable television. And uh, she, we never had an agreement of how long she was to keep it for. It was, they were friendly with one another, so there was just an oral contract. There was no, you know, written contract because the owner had known her for a couple of years. So everything was fine. They didn't have any problems. But in February 1997, the owner of Mod World was offered a photo shoot for some of the items in his store, one of which was the lamp, which I have the broken lamp with me, and photos of all the, the, the broken lamp, the broken items, and I have receipts for everything. What are, what are the items? Okay, I have a list here, and I have a copy for you. Um, a custom-made antique mannequin headlamp with fun fur shade, which I can show you right here. Exhibit A. It, it was apparently returned to you, is that it, but in uh, well, broken condition? Is that that In it? February 1997, Richard Smith went to the show because Hedda had not returned any of the phone calls. That Richard he, Smith is the owner? The owner, one of the well, owners. Why of is he not here? He is so upset, so physically upset about this that he, he doesn't want to, um, he, he's too nervous and scared. But to it here. was uh, he, not you, that had the conversations, I gather, from what you've just right, said. Right, right. But I'm the manager of the store, and it's also damaging to us because it's something but that I, we I can no longer uh, sell. But I would point out that uh, when we get to the conversation, right. uh, if you were not privy to it, present, at the time of the right. conversation, that you won't be able to, uh, to give us uh, testimony as to what was said, and right. uh, therefore, right. uh, I would, I'm really 
uh, distressed that the owner didn't uh, come because uh, without his testimony, well, I will... Well, he's here, but he, oh, doesn't, he, here? he doesn't want to speak. He's too scared. Well, that is uh, his uh, uh, prerogative. I clearly have all the facts and, all, I mean, all the damages, all okay, the photos. Okay, I understand. You know, so you have uh, the uh, lamp. What else do you have? I have, this is the broken mannequin head. Mannequin that head. Was busted when the drag queens were having a fake fight or some sort on her show. And um, there's a photo of what the mannequin head looked like. It's a $40, it's a very expensive $75 mannequin head. Okay. And um, the materials are $25 or more. Basically, in the lamp would have been sold for $150. Richard made it himself. This is what the mannequin head looked like. I have a receipt Okay, for we'll come back uh, with respect to the damages. This is how uh, the lamp would have... Uh, later on in the trial. Okay. Uh, we'll now turn to the Thank defendant, you, uh, Ms. Lettuce, and who mm -hmm. is the uh, young lady? Oh, this is my witness, Bubbles. Bubbles uh, no. will uh, be cool. able to provide, provide testimony. some important About information. About Mr. Rick. Yes. I heard Mr. Rick say some things. Well, now, this is the situation now. Originally, what happened, Your Honor Koch, yeah. was I was approached by them, actually, provides stuff for my show, set works. Now, when uh, they lent me the lamp, and they lent me a few other little items, um, what is it wasn't a about? lent, actually. It was a barter. I was bar offering them on-the-air plugs. What kind, what kind of show do you have? It's a variety show. It's a talk show. Jazzy, hot stuff, you know. We spoof, we spoof topical events, political satires. Uh, how big is stuff. your audience? Oh, it's, it's 300,000 viewers in Manhattan. 300,000 300, viewers? viewers. Okay. Okay. Does this pertain to the case? Yes, of course it pertains to the case, miss. No, and as on. I was saying... <laughs> as I was saying, as you could see, Mr. Koch, as it went was like such. We bought it for the lamp. I provided them with on-air plugs. I have document, a videotape of me promoting them on the air. Also, you have it with you? Yes, I do. So, so. I can see oh, that? you can view it, yes. All right. Why don't you turn that uh, over to the court officer, Justine? Also... And we will view it in a moment. Here you go. Also, I have here advertising rates for the show. What it would cost to advertise on the show? What would it cost? Well, for a 10-second spot, it would cost $150. Much more than that lamp with that doily covering the cover. So... And uh, what was the plug that you provided? I plug this, this is just one plug I provide when I say, and Seth's provided, it's a mod, mod world. At no time was it agreed that we were advertising with her. She asked to borrow it. And, and secondly, I never made an agreement with this young. Once I've again, never made... Uh, it would be very helpful if the owner stepped up. The uh, owner obviously has a... Wait, please. please. I never made an agreement please, with this young please, lady also. Please, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Koch. I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry. If the owner stepped up, he could give me his version, but you didn't make the uh, deal. Your yeah. Honor, I did, I was willing to... Since I've had a very good relationship with these people, with Rick, for many, for a good number of years, and I wanted to maintain that relationship, unfortunately, when he came back asking for the lamp, which I was kind of shocked that he was coming back asking for the lamp, since I just assumed the barter, as we bartered for, I was providing with on-air time. Tell me exactly uh, when you had the conversation with him uh, with respect to the terms yes, uh, of his providing uh, the material, uh, the props. What was the, the conversation? The terms were he gave me a few minor pieces for my set, nothing of great value and i provided him with promotion did you say that at the time yes we did we like, said what exactly did you say to him what did he say to you this is a while back but exactly if i can put it in some simple words hedda here have the stuff plug it on your show go for it sister those were the very words and you drew from and that, terms. that the material now, was yours yes. at the end of the show now what have happened? you uh, borrowed material from other uh, stores i have and uh, no, have you uh, uh, kept it or returned it under the terms? No, it's, all, it's all different agreements with different people. Different stores have different agreements with me. Everyone has a different, you know, okay. I don't deal with I'm the same. I'm just going to hear the comments. witness and then I'll come back to you. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, your, your name is Bubbles. My name is Bubbles. And I was in back of the stage when Rick came back to Hedda and said, Hedda, this lamp is broken and I need $75 for it. And Hedda had this awful look of astonishment on her face. And she just didn't say anything for a couple minutes. And then Rick said, well, if you promote, if you show up at my new store's grand opening, he goes, we'll call it even. No, I was willing to Which do she this. Didn't. Show, I was willing to do this. And when I called him regarding this and said, do you need me to come to this? He said, no, we don't need your services. So in order to maintain our good relationship, I was willing to go down to the store, which I didn't have to do, dressed glamorously like I am, and promote his store, which I have done in the past, many years ago. And I am willing... Uh, I just find this particularly odd, since he's not speaking. I have never dealt with this one before in my life. So I, that's why I find it very confusing about this case for me. Okay. If, oh, Your yeah. Honor, can I say something? Yes. Now, 
I am a performer and everything, but I also am nervous. And Rick was in the back, and he was raising his fist at me, but laughing at the same time. So but you're I not just, afraid of him, are you? I'm not afraid of him, but I'm nervous in being here. I didn't eat all day, and I'm still nervous. So he can't be that nervous if he's raising his... That and is joking his, at me in the back. That, that is his prerogative as to whether or not he wants to appear... He's camera shy. Uh, ...as plaintive. What? He's very camera shy, and I have all the information. No, well, you, uh, well, he's not very truthful please, then. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Koch. The, the problem... Uh, uh, is uh, that you don't have all the information. What you have, uh, Miss Sweeney, is what someone told you, and uh, that uh, is not uh, dispositive here, okay. uh, particularly uh, when the person who held uh, the conversation uh, with uh, Miss Lettuce uh, uh, is, in fact, available in this courtroom, but chooses not to step up uh, right. to the uh, plaintiff's table. Now, if, let's if turn to the right. video, okay? Yes. Uh, Christine, would you play exhibit the video? Exhibit A. That's right. No, this is Exhibit A. Oh, that's kind of... Well, B, then. Whatever Exhibit that, that is, that I don't know. That would have to be B. That's okay. Let's give it up for my designer, Aaron, who made me this beautiful garment. <laughs> Wonderful, isn't it? Bob's your uncle for providing the table, and lovely another thing on the East Village who provided all this other wonderful stuff called the Tamad Mod World. But now, on a serious note, fellas, we have a very special guest. More than generous, I might add. Well, I don't know about that. And that was just one of many, that was one of many plugs that I did on the show for them. I see. If, Similar. If these okay. items weren't worth anything. She keeps saying that they're junk, and clearly they're not. I have two. They're kitschy. kitschy. I have two receipts here. For the, one is for the dress form, which I haven't even gotten to mention, the dress form that she never returned at all. It's a $100 dress form. We have receipts for buying the, the mannequin head, which is an antique. Right. The dress form was $100. Have a lamp? The head and, and two the dress pillows form, as well. And two pillows. One of which was damaged and, and you, one was uh, not returned. You allege the total value to be three hundred dollars. We're gonna take a uh, short uh, recess and Thank I'll be you. right back with my decision. Thank you. For those of you watching us on the internet, I'm told we're experiencing a small problem with our website poll, but we are working on it right now. Hope to have it working on our next case, so stay with us on that. So who do you think will win this one? Is someone impersonating the truth? Will the plaintiff or the defendant win? We'll find out after a break. The case is called What a Drag, down to Harvey Levin now for some opinions. Well, it looks like Miss Lettuce has the edge down here, Carol. Let's find out. What do you think? Who should win? I think Heather Lettuce should win because um, she did plug the, um, the um, mannequin. She did plug the store. And that was a big deal. Exhibit B, as they said. What do you think? I think the plaintiff. Why? Because, because when you lend something to somebody, you expect to get no. it back. A favor or no favor? The well, plaintiff should win definitely because, first of all, she borrowed it. She should have returned it back the way she did. Okay. Gave. Well, the owner, the owner of the store is not there to represent his store, and until until he is there, there's no way of knowing what the actual oral agreement was. The missing key witness. Let's let's find out if that person uh, will have an impact. And Carol, let me just say uh, again, I think we need to reiterate: these cases are absolutely real. These are not actors, and you can trust me because I'm a lawyer. I hear you. Oh yeah. Thanks, Harvey. Well, let's see what. The other lawyer, Judge Koch, has to say about this case. This is a uh, matter uh, where I have to decide uh, whether uh, that which was given uh, to uh, Hedda Lettuce uh, for her show was on loan or given uh, in exchange uh, for a plug on the program. Uh, the uh, testimony uh, is only that of uh, Hedda Lettuce with respect to how she received uh, the uh, property. Uh, uh, the plaintiff, uh, who is in court but chose not to uh, appear and uh, give testimony, instead having um, a very uh, able uh, member of his staff, but who was not present uh, during the conversation, uh, Ms. Uh, Sweeney, um, she gave testimony instead and could not, of course, uh, discuss the actual terms of the loan. So or uh, the uh, providing of the uh, material uh, in exchange uh, for a plug. The um, defendant, in addition, uh, produced a uh, video uh, which uh, verifies that, in fact, a plug uh, was uh, provided uh, on the uh, show and also discussed her rate card uh, that uh, would be charged uh, for uh, advertising uh, on that uh, show. The 
a requirement uh, in any case of a civil nature is that the uh, plaintiff uh, provide by a preponderance of the evidence uh, the proofs necessary to establish uh, their case. Uh, that was not done here, and therefore, judgment for the defendant. Tumultuous courtroom as Judge Koch finds for the defendant, the plaintiff on her way out of the courtroom now, Ms. Sweeney. Uh, Ms. Sweeney, the fact is, I, I think the uh, absence of the owner of the store pretty much sunk the case. I isn't, isn't the audience of the Head of Letter Show the kind of people you'd like in the store? Well, maybe not anymore, because I find that if a friendship can be destroyed by something so petty, um, then maybe we don't need those kind of friends. And I'm very upset because we did have a videotape with Richard speaking on the videotape about the damages. He just didn't want to be seen. And I think that it was unfair and we didn't get to get all the facts out. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, that's what happens, I guess. That's it. Your friendship with Miss Lettuce is over. I guess so. I'm going to have to take her outside and pummel her to death. No, I'm kidding. Oh. But, um, no, but anyway. All right. Come, well, come see my band, Snooker. All right. right, thank you for the thank invitation. Uh, Josephine has some documents for you to sign. And the defendant, Miss Lettuce, along with Bubbles, now uh, joining us here outside the courtroom. Congratulations. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Miss Lettuce, Bubbles. Thank you. Hi. What was your reaction to the decision? I felt it was quite just, and I agree with Mayor Koch. Oh, Mr. Koch, completely. I don't think our friendship is ruined between us and the store. That's a little too severe. It was just basically what I call a misunderstanding, but in my favor. <laughs> is there anything you might do, Bubbles, to patch things up? Well, I always believe in making peace, and I think with time we'll be able to be friends again, but she was just not very nice, and it's, it's not good to do that. All right. Well, if you step to the back, Josephine, we'll have much. some documents for you. Thank you. Thank Love you. the Thank show. You. Harvey, Carol? <laughs> Kurt is speechless. Harvey, here's the question. It was the most important point. If one side doesn't show up, does the other automatically win? They don't automatically win, Carol, but obviously in this case, the key witness wasn't there. It's hearsay because he isn't, and that really sunk the plaintiff's case, and that is as simple as that. Let's find out what you think. Good decision or bad? Great decision. Because? He didn't show up. If it was my shop, I'd have shown up. Okay. Good decision? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. King Solomon couldn't have done a better job. <laughs> hey, let me ask. Has anybody seen this head of lettuce show around here? What is, uh, how is it, what is it, a good show? Yeah, it's a cool show, you know, they, they have, you know, performance and stuff like that, you know. Hedda, Hedda, you know, Hedda has a really interesting show. It's Do advertisers get their money's worth in the show? Yeah, of course. She plugs shows all the time, you know. I mean, it's what they do, you know. She's a dry cleaner. She's a <laughs> boy and what do you Well, there you go, and in a, in a word or two, Carol. Back to you. All right, Harvey, we'll move right on from that. In fact, the uh, sides are lining up for the next case today. Let's go back into the courtroom, see what's ahead.